Business in the 217 on the WMAY Morning News Feed. I'm Greg Bishop, and we join each and every Wednesday with Michelle Ownby. She's the publisher of the Springfield Business Journal to get an idea of what's going on in the business community in and around Springfield. Michelle, always good to talk with you. How are you? Good morning, Greg. Doing well. So uh, always good things to talk about, including uh, Chatham Cafe. Looking at a new location. Is this in Chatham or where are we going to see this new uh, location set up? No, I, I'm assuming they'll have to come up with a new name for the second location because it will be in Springfield. The original Chatham Cafe has been open since 2015. Uh, husband and wife, Kenny and Lou Asani. Apparently, it's very popular. I have never eaten there, but I don't get to Chatham much. They're open uh, seven days a week, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, kind of your classic home-style American cafe. And they must have a lot of fans because we posted the news yesterday on our Springfield Business Journal Facebook page that they had uh, purchased the former McDonald's there on South MacArthur that's been vacant for a few years now and are planning to open a second location. And a uh, huge number of comments and shares and likes and all that good stuff. People were really going crazy over the news that they were going to have a, a Springfield location. So wish them well with their expansion. Chatham Cafe, uh, been there a few times and yeah, it's just great food, awesome service, uh, very, very Americana uh, in, a, in a, a way that a lot of people will enjoy. So it'll be good to see them uh, branch off into Springfield and whether they bring the brand name with them or they change it to a different type of brand name. Uh, good to see that. One thing I do want to talk about, though, it's kind of interesting uh, that vacant building used to be a McDonald's. Uh, mm -hmm. But what's fascinating is anytime that, you know, one of these larger uh, chain type of restaurants takes themselves out of that location, they do quite a bit of scrubbing to, to make that location no longer look like what it used to be. <laughs> uh, and that's the case with this building as well. I mean, you might drive by and say, was that a McDonald's? Right. Definitely all the signage and any uh, remnants of McDonald's is gone. But, you know, what I thought was interesting was so many restaurants are cutting back their hours and their service because of the staffing issue right now. And, and when I talked with Lou, I said, gosh, are you are you concerned about that at all? You know, here you're looking at opening up a second location, plus they're open seven days a week, you know, three meals a day. That's uh, that's pretty expansive hours. She said they are hoping to keep the same type of setup at their Springfield location. Uh, they have a number of family members involved in the business, but of course they will have to hire for the second location. So hopefully things will uh, go well with that as they try to ramp up. So remodeling uh, going to have to happen a bit. Uh, also staffing, uh, you'll see, of course, all of that ramping up and we'll keep you posted on the very latest of uh, Chatham Cafe taking over the former McDonald's at uh, MacArthur Boulevard uh, with a second location being planned there. So uh, exciting news. Uh, we also have exciting news on uh, the services front. Tell us about uh, uh, Michael and Mary uh, Weist. Yes, yeah, so the former Robbie's building, uh, again, had been vacant for a little while now. Uh, owner Arch Bailey had decided that the pandemic was a good time to good time to retire. So that building has been closed for a little over a year now, I believe. Uh, but yes, Michael and, and Mary, husband and wife, uh, have purchased that building along with Dr. Carmen Chase, who's also an investor and partner in the business. And they are going to be opening up a, an art gallery, gift shop, and cafe called... Uh, Lincoln Plaza Galleria. So I actually had a chance to talk with Michael this morning. He said, really, there's not a lot of remodeling work that needs to happen. You may remember uh, Robbie's had been extensively remodeled shortly before they closed. They had that water damage from a leak in the adjacent building and they had temporarily closed for a while to make repairs from that. So, you know, other than some cosmetics, uh, no major work required. And they are hoping to be open by the first part of October. So that'll be a space for uh, an art gallery, but also a place for people to get together and enjoy uh, a coffee or uh, some some different types of uh, refreshments. Uh, have they indicated to you yet as to what kind of artists they'll be featuring? Will they be local or how are they going to uh, cultivate that uh, that that part of the business? Yeah, so a little bit of everything. The main portion of the gallery, they are going to rent space to local artists uh, to sell their work. In addition to Mike, Michael is an artist, and he said he, uh, you know, has sold before at Studio on Sixth Street and other local galleries. But now he will have this this place for other local artists to rent space. 
Um, but then the gift shop is going to be artists from around the U.S. And he said that's just because they anticipate uh, a fairly significant volume. So they're going to purchase artwork wholesale from various artists around the country and sell those through the, the gift shop. So combination of both local and national artists. And then, as you mentioned, they will also have, uh, you know, coffee and cocoa and baked goods and that kind of thing. Have a little cafe area where people can hang out. So sounds like a great addition to downtown. And they said they're really counting on the on the tourist traffic starting to rebound. So in the months ahead, be on the lookout for Lincoln Plaza Galleria in downtown Springfield. We're talking with Michelle Ownby. She is publisher of the Springfield Business Journal here on the WMAY Morning News Feed, Business in the 217. Your sister publication, the Illinois Times, has a story out now that people need to go and pick up in the current edition, not the one that's coming out this week, but the current edition out. Uh, interesting story about the governor and his plans uh, to consolidate some offices in Chicago. What's the impact on those offices and state employees here in Springfield? Well, the good news is that at least for now, it looks like we're dodging a bullet in Springfield. Uh, as you mentioned, in Chicago, the, the governor really over the last couple of years, even prior to the pandemic, had announced that he wanted to restructure the state's real estate portfolio, look at cost savings. And now with even uh, more state employees continuing to work remotely, they've done a study of uh, the Chicago area office leases and found that they can be reduced by about 30 percent. Uh, they're consolidating a lot of offices. Of course, the big news there has been uh, putting the Thompson Center up for sale and then the state purchased a building over on the, the West Loop uh, where they're going to consolidate a lot of those smaller leases. So that's definitely going to have a big impact in the Chicago area, which you know makes you wonder what's in store for Springfield or are we next? But the good news is that after talking with, uh, you know, Steve Myers and some of the other downtown property owners that are very familiar with the operations of the state and have a number of leases with them, you know, they've said it, it looks like people are, are coming back to work, at least in this area. They're starting to repopulate those offices. Michelle Ombi is the publisher of the Springfield Business Journal, and you can find their sister publication, the Illinois Times, with that cover story out now. Uh, Michelle, if people want to get a copy of not just the Illinois Times, but also the Springfield Business Journal, uh, what's the best way that they can do that online, via email, and even in person? Definitely the best way is to go to springfieldbusinessjournal.com and sign up for BizBytes. That's our weekly newsletter, and it's free of charge with a roundup of what's happening in the Springfield business community. But of course, you can also sign up for the print edition online and get that delivered to your home or office. Michelle Ombe, publisher of the Springfield Business Journal, here with Business in the 217 on the WMAY Morning News Feed. Appreciate your time, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks, Greg.